Hello, I'm Angel Choi Chu, and this is Emily Sargent. We're here today to talk about African Americans in education. Um, to begin this discussion, I think it would be important to point out some history on this subject. Um, it wasn't until the late 19th century that there was even um, legal uh, mandates that said that there should be separate, e that either race should not be a criterion in schools or that there should be separate but equal um, land grants or institutions for African American students. Um, it wasn't until 1954 that segregation was actually declared unconstitutional and but nothing really seemed much to happen at that point in time and nothing really um, happened until 1969 um, in a court case of Alexander versus Holmes County Board of Education and that's actually when schools began to um, be desegregated and that was only about 40 years ago and that's important to remember that. Um, Emily? Um, some things that aided this history um, in evolving um, was uh, the critical race theory, uh, or CRT, which helped to give a voice and aid in racial justice. Um, this theory incorporates several disciplines and is used to challenge the racist ideologies that were used by um, whites to hinder policies and efforts for African American students from participating in education. Um, CRT played a major role in challenging these beliefs um, that gave supposed merit to those who wish to keep African Americans out of things that are, were considered to be white privilege. Um, some statistics, according to our textbook, um, there has been an increase in the graduation, the high school graduation rate for African Americans, but it's still 74.2% as compared to 80% Caucasian. Um, the numbers get a little worse when it comes to bachelor um, programs, bachelor's degrees. Um, the, the discrepancy there is at about 10%. African Americans are at about a 10% lower rate um, for bachelor's degrees. Um, there are many financial and health implications of this. Some of those implications are um, financially, a person who has a bachelor's degree makes about $51,000 a year. Um, that goes way down for a person with just a high school diploma that goes down to less than $20,000 a year. Um, even worse, workers with no high school diploma, the average income goes down to $18,700 a year. And um, it's important to note that the poverty level for it, just a three-person family is $18,300 a year. Um, some other implications of, um, some health implications of getting an education is that those with um, a high school and or a secondary education uh, tend to smoke less, um, exercise more. They're twice as likely to engage in volunteer work. Um, social networks that they develop in college have lifelong personal and professional benefits. Um, a college education dramatically increases the probability of finding a job that, that you like. Um, the importance of higher education for the struggle of equality for African Americans is profound. Education was key to the rise of African Americans from slavery to freedom. Uh, African American obtainment of education aided in the civil rights movement. Uh, higher education for African Americans was partially responsible for the election of our first African American president in 2008, President Barack Obama. Many of the achievements in U.S. history were contributed from the efforts of African Americans. In short, education is freedom. Some issues, however, that have stunted uh, or held back um, African Americans as far as education and things that we're going to discuss as far as counseling are college choice and enrollment, achievement, uh, counselors need to promote policies, there is identity, identity development, um, there's gender issues, African American men and women face different uh, challenges, there's socialization, uh, unhealthy versus healthy responses to discrimination and racism, and also school and campus experience have a huge impact on outcomes. So as counselors, how can we increase the likelihood of positive outcomes in education? This is something that we need to question ourselves about. There's some more uh, challenges that we're going to yeah, discuss. Yeah, the, the challenges um, 
our part that are part of it are a lack of effective mentoring, uh, covert and overt racism, uh, lack of adv advocacy and role models, uh, less collegial and um, teacher support, and there's a greater need for counselors and school counselors who are competent in working with uh, the African American population for support in their goal achievements. Um, a couple more problems that are that we find throughout the school age years um, is um, disidentification, where um, it's mostly with African American boys, where they disengage themselves uh, or disengage their academic performance um, from their self-esteem, and then also um, something that the textbook called Uncle Tom syndrome, um, where um, unfortunately African Americans have learned that passivity is a necessary survival technique. Um, and they've learned to deny their aggressive feelings towards their oppressors, which to me sounds a little bit like learned helplessness. Um, the current trend, um, since the 1990s, the number of African American males enrolled in college has decreased or declined. Um, some of the factors that contribute to this is, um, are poverty, um, lack of preparation because of segregated and underperforming high schools and, and primary and middle, middle schools, as we kind of touched on before. Um, prohibitive tuition costs. Um, the, there's also decreased amounts of financial assistance from federal, state, and local sources. And there is deeply rooted institu institutional racism. Um, we're going to go into the issues in a little more detail now. And one of the issues, the first issue we're going to talk about is um, institutional or teacher attitudes. Um, staff, many school sy systems have um, still have predominantly Caucasian teaching, teaching staffs, but the population has changed from predominantly Caucasian to predominantly minority. So sometimes the teaching skills that were used before may not be effective anymore. Um, another thing um, is that African Americans are uh, two to five more times, times more likely to be suspended from school and receive harsher consequences than their Caucasian peers. Um, communication style is another thing that um, may cause problems because many African American um, young people have very animated, persuasive, and confrontational communication styles, but schools have, are supposed to be quiet and it's teacher focused and you're supposed to you know, speak when spoken to. And so sometimes these behaviors of the African American youths are seen as um, disruptive or aggressive or misbehaving when it's not intended that way. Um, another thing that is, can be a problem for African American youths in school is code switching. Um, that's something that we've talked about a little bit in this class before. And uh, just a reminder, it's, it's altering behavioral patterns to confront or to conform to the current environment. Um, it can be psychologically stressful, especially in an environment where you have a classroom where you're trying to behave one way for the teacher, and but you still want to be cool around your friends, so you kind of try to behave cool, but you're trying to be good at the same time. It can be very stressful to try to do both at the same time. Um, the next issue that we're going to talk about is poverty or low socioeconomic class. Um, the poverty rate is more than twice as high for African Americans than it is for Caucasians. Um, some implications of that may be that it's hard to get supplies or it's hard to get transportation to and from school. Um, when you are in poverty, you may feel like you need to go or you may need to go for loan money. You, meet, you need to pay the rent. You need some money, and you have no other way to get it. Um, there's also a lack of equipment or supplies in the lower socioeconomic school system, which is a very serious problem. Um, the next issue that we will talk about is um, family dynamics. Um, only 32% of African American families involve married couples, as opposed to 53% for all families. Um, this might be a possible discussion topic later once we uh, finish our presentation. But one implication is actually um, a positive implication of this. African American, I'm sorry, this is African American women often undertake adult responsibilities such as the care of younger siblings and household duties at an early age because of the single parent households that is actually uh, can be an extra burden on them. Um, African American females who are unmarried account for nearly 60% of births, and these of these mothers, the majority are teenagers. That's in our textbook. Um, but the positive implication of that would be that an extended family network and sharing of responsibilities is often a strength of African-American families. 
Uh, Emily, would you like to talk about some possible solutions for these problems? Um, some possible solutions, uh, as mentioned before, to you know implicate and advocate po um, policies that are going to help uh, all students obtain their educational goals. So providing African Americans with needs-based uh, needs, full tuition, book scholarships, tuition costs have risen dramatically. Uh, but many affirmative action programs and scholarships have been either discontinued or dramatically reduced. Um, increase, another solution, possible solution would be to increase African American male undergraduate enrollment. Uh, efforts should be widened to include non-traditional age individuals who may have had earlier um, aborted efforts to gain a degree or have been in the workplace for a number of years. Okay, we'd like to go into some uh, guidelines for counseling now. Um, just in general, as far as when counseling African Americans, um, or any minority for that matter, do not focus on human values and ignore the role of race. Um, this creates a really high level of social anxiety. Um, there was a study done um, that said that African American parents who denied racism or didn't confront racism with their children um, had preschool children that had higher rates of behavior problems. So that seems to indicate that not talking about it, not getting out in the open and, and dealing with it um, creates more stress. So I, uh, that would also go into a counseling, that would also apply in a counseling situation if you just pretend it's not there, it's not gonna, it's not gonna help, it's gonna cause more stress. Um, also, the degree of alliance with a Caucasian counselor is affected by the stage of racial identity. Um, it's also affected by gender, age, attitudes, and beliefs. When counseling African American females, um, you have to remember that they are dealing with the double issue of being both African American and female. They have to fight against negative images to prevent those images from being incorporated into their own belief systems. Um, so there's, to help counter that, their sense of internal strength should be increased because it appears to serve as a buffer to racism and sexism. Also, <clears throat> um, the, you gotta think, uh, or you gotta realize that mistrust might be um, a problem. The, you have to realize that the mental health environment is a microcosm of the bigger society, um, and you should be willing to address and expect possible mistrust from African American clients. So as counselors, um, we need to aid and advocate uh, School counselors, career counselors, community counselors must all be competent in both African American culture and college culture and education and educational culture throughout um, the lifespan to aid all students in their, you know, quest for success through education. Uh, school counselors should also assist clients in promoting higher education through mentoring and guidance. Uh, for instance, um, some students may have uh, a hard time with their FAFSA forms or how to go about getting scholarships and things like that. And uh, these issues need to be addressed um, in counseling. Uh, career counseling. A career counseling for young African American adults. Um, there's a great need for vocational training and guidance uh, from educational institutions early on. Uh, courses on career planning are not currently a requirement. So counselors need to step in and emphasize the importance of career planning and what educational requirements are needed um, so that everyone, uh, in, you know, especially African American students, can get on the path to reach their desirable career goals. Um, also, there's the, the issue of in career counseling of identifying compatible goals and refining skills to help promote positive outlooks regarding education and uh, fulfillment and success. Counselors must also aid and advocate prior to higher education from elementary school on up, K through 12, uh, all students need to be put on the path, you know, in their own quest for higher education or employment. Uh, students must be given the tools, resources, assistance, gu and guidance 
to attain that higher education. Um, also, you must educate on, um, the importance of education while encouraging students, letting them know that you can do this, you can succeed, um, especially um, where some African American students may feel that these goals are unobtainable. We need to let them know you can, you can do it. And so, uh, community counselors uh, need to promote self-worth for uh, clients and life choices to help even out the playing field for African American clients. Uh, once again, do not ignore race and cultural issues, but do not make race and cultural things an issue either. Um, let's see. Family counseling um, implications are that African American families are often matriarchal in nature, um, meaning that the predominantly the women are in the head of the household. Um, and they tend to be closer knit with um, friends and extended family. Um, so that's important to keep in mind uh, with family counseling. With couples counseling, divorce rates are high among everyone. So um, we need to get as much support uh, for the couple as possible. And so do not ignore or undermine the, you know, the importance of external forces such as their extended family and friends and other um, key people involved in their life. Um, some other counseling tips provided by our text for working with African American clients included uh, if whenever you're working with a client of a different ethnicity uh, the counselor needs to address the client's level of comfort with the counselor and it because this is beneficial to um, ensure the, the relationship that's needed to, for therapeutic work. And also, if you're working with a referred client, explaining the counseling process and give special attention to um, you, your, you as a counselor's connection to the agency that referred them and go into detail explaining limitations of confidentiality. Identify and explore feelings, expectations, and views, cultural issues presented by African American clients and involve them in the counseling process by allowing them to identify problems and solutions that work for them. Uh, <clears throat> it's also important to be ha with uh, African American clients to be, have a egalitarian counseling relationship. It tends to resonate more with African American clients. Therefore, some self-disclosure and discussions that might not pertain to counseling issues uh, or topics in the beginning may lower anxiety and aid um, in them establishing a person com personal commonality to also help you know align the counselor-client relationship. Some more um, tips from our text for counseling um, African American clients is to uh, be familiar with the stages in, of healthy and unhealthy reactions and experiences um, to the discrimination in regards of racial, cultural, and personal identity development. These are important. Don't ignore them. Um, identify and utilize, when appropriate, the positive assets of the client, such as family, extended family, friends, important relationships, resources in the community, uh, church, and other support systems that may be in place. Uh, do not treat racism as though it doesn't exist or it's just an excuse, but rather help them to discover um, different ways of conquering these external problems. And um, also, this may include, involve uh, assisting them in accessing resources in the community. Uh, facilitating the counseling process through having the client define their goals and how to accomplish these goals. Um, this seems to uh, go well with African American clients because it focuses on client strengths and ways that they have exceeded in overcoming um, issues in the past. Uh, and then once the counselor and client relationship is aligned, a collaborative effort and acceptable interventions tend to aid and promote success in this area. So. Okay, so we've had a pretty good discussion. We've discussed a lot of the issues. 
um, a lot of the challenges faced by African Americans, um, both in school and education and in counseling, and we've discussed some uh, counseling implications. Um, uh, I guess we would like to open this now um, to the class for discussion. All right, thank, thank you. you.